Hello everyone. With this uh, small uh, tutorial, I wanted to uh, show you about how to do PC to bot ZigB communication. This is kind of part one, so we'll use a manager tool only. Later, uh, we'll do part two where we'll use it, uh, Visual C uh, to, to do that job. So let's get on with it. So the Topics are discussing ZigB communication between PC and CM510 or CM530. You will need a USB 2 dynamic so, which is this part. A Zig2 Zig2 serial uh, module, which is here, and a Zig100 daughter card that sits on top here. So the real thing looks like that. If you happen to have one of those older computers that have a nine pin serial port, you can hook up directly at this point. You don't need to buy the USB 2 uh, dynamic so. But the USB 2 dynamic so have other things that you can do it for too, but so that's at another time. We'll be using the Robo Plus 2 manager. We use a small little test ZigBee program uh, on the uh, robot side. So ZIG100 has three mode of operation, one to one, waiting, they call waiting on many to one, and broadcast. So today we'll be using broadcast uh, only today. And these mode settings can be done via the manager tool or the PC terminal tools. We use a manager tool today. When you do a one-to-one -one mode, that means usually very often people use like the RC100 and a single bot. That means you have one-to-one -one mode. No worry about setting different channel because uh, the system knows uh, it goes, it does that stuff correctly. When you do broadcast, the system like we have here is USB 2.0, uh, two serial USB 2 or COM port. By default, this ZIG2 serial will go to default to channel one. And when it is channel one, it works best for CM5 because that's what the CM5 is set up for. However, for well, not nowadays, when you use these things, uh, you probably have CM510, CM530. They use channel four. In this matter, when you're in broadcast mode. So that's something important. So. And the only way you can do, uh, one of the way to be exact, one of the way to do uh, channel four in broadcast mode is to remove an R7 uh, resistor on the ZIG2 serial board. Uh, you probably cannot see through the video. So uh, making a blow up here, you see R7, it used to be something like a little piece, like a resistor here, like on R6 and R5, but then you just just use a clipper and clip it off. Obviously, one to use to remove R7 is remove and let you resolder. Uh, this ZIG2 serial, after you remove R7, essentially is set up on channel four only. You cannot use it back to channel one for CM5. So keep that in mind. Once you connect it, you can use a manager tool, and I'm just going through different slide here to, to give you an idea. We'll do an next demo coming up soon. When you hook your uh, Robo Plus Manager, you hook it up, you can do a Zigbee setting and you can hook it up. And hook it up and then you hook it up, you can have uh, uh, the remote ID here. You can write in a specific ID for the Zig 110A or the Zig 110, uh, Zig 100, another Zig 100, you can modify it. Or you can go to broadcast mode and then you are in broadcast mode. And then whether you wait mode or not wait mode. I found out wait mode is not very useful uh, for within the Roboto system. Uh, sometime I found out that the ZIG2 serial US, uh, US2 dynamic so somehow like the first level USB port in the back of PC. Once connected, you can do many things. You can put in your own data here and you can put send and you can see how the send data is. Uh, in the example, I'm gonna show you uh, the robot here. 
actually receive the data and send it back, or it can send it back itself too, and you can see it here. Or you can click on RC100 and then in the virtual RC100 here, you can click this button if you want to. So that's another way to do it. In, uh, um, so it's just like you're in task program. So this thing again. Uh, the broadcast mode finally one go uh, before we leave all this is you can set up the broadcast mode inside the manager. Of course, you probably know by now inside of your TS key program. Uh, you can also set that to remote code ID equal to 65535. You can do that inside the task program also. And this is a test Zigbee program, uh, which should be included in the posting. And it's a simple test program that I download to this guy and this guy. Uh, both of these Zig 110A already uh, set up for broadcasting only. So what does this test Zigbee program, path program do? Uh, essentially, you can see the endless loop. It wait one eighth of a second, mainly because the loop is going through fast, very fast. So sometimes you need a little bit of delay uh, each time so that the uh, the messages can catch up with each other essentially. When are you full blast, uh, you can do that visual C also. But this program kind of small, so we need a little bit of wait time. So you check if the room cook can arrive, the flag is true. That means uh, the robot receives something, pick it up, save to data receive parameter. If not, just set zero to that parameter that I receive. So once you receive something, you TXD, that means you send it back out to the PC, essentially the same data that you receive. So essentially whatever the bot receive, it's sent back one time. If not, it's sent in zero only. So most of the time it's sent zero essentially. Also we have a piece of if else if group, if somehow on the robot itself, if I put any the up, down, left, and right button, the bot will transmit a certain signal. So if I push up, it will send the number two. If I push D, send number four. If I push left, it send eight, the R send 16. And that's the extent of the loop code, okay? So let's get on with it. Let's see RoboHost Manager. And right now, RoboHost Manager, I have a USB port. You go to USB 2 then a mixo, SIG2 serial, and a ZIC 100 daughter board there. Okay, so I'll leave it here for the moment. Let me get closer. You can see. So, first, let's find which COM port I'm on. Okay, I probably come on COM 10 this time. And normally when you root bus manager, you click on this one, right? To connect to your robot. You don't do it this time. You don't connect here. You go over to Zig2 Serial Management, left click on it. But this will come up on. So check with Comtel, uh, Com10, set up at 56, uh, 57.600 and all of that. So first we need to check the Zigbee setting. And this is a trick I need to show you. Uh, in order to click on Zigbee, you left click on Zigbee and this one up. I know the main menu say, after clicking the all clear button, push the reset button on Zig2 zero within two seconds. I found it more reliable, and this is the reset button. I found out it's more reliable to push the reset button first, click OK, and then release it. Okay, because I found out that everything send tend to be synchronized on the release of the reset button, not when you push it down. It took some figure out to do that, uh, to make it reliable each time. So now you can see it was in broadcast mode. If I had it to want to go to one-to-one, -one, and let's say my other Zigbee 110A address was 11.0A4, and then I would put it here. You see it change, but I want broadcast mode this time. So I click on broadcast, we see everything change. I'm done then, okay? So now let's go over to 
these guys. So I will keep this one here, a little bit down, maybe in the line of sight here. So let's say I'm going to start with this gun first. So I turn it on. It's in play mode. Push play. So the program is running now. Okay, and you notice what? It starts sending data back to the PC. It's at zero, 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 zero here very often. Okay. So right now they're communicating. So let's say I want to send 255. This is from the PC side. If I click on send, you need to watch out the receive here. You're going to see it with brought back 255 one time. See that 255 one time. And then it's all zero because of the endless loop. So let me push 255 again. You see it repeating here one time receive back. Okay. Or oh, you can use the RC100. And let's pull it in. So you can push up. It's send one. Right. It's an eight. Five. It's in 256. One is sending 16. If you hold it, you see you send one point eight one is continuously. Six, it will send one five twelve completely coming back. Now as soon as you relieve, you give zero. Okay. So essentially that's the basic of the stuff. Let's see now what happened now. I pushed up button here on the robot. You see it sent two. So every time I pushed Two two. If put I push uh, left, it's sending over eight. You should see it in the received data, and then it's set to zero. That sends sixteen. Every time I push it, it sends sixteen. So that's a little piece of code that essentially show that. Now the interesting part what happened is this bot here also on broadcast, and it had the same program, and it's on broadcast. So I'm going to turn it on, and then I push start on it, and it's run the program. So right now, this is interesting. The PC is broadcasting everything. It receives and sends everything out. This one is receive and send everything out. This one receives and send everything out, too. So that's three of them broadcasting together now. And this is getting interesting. So let's say I put in. Uh, uh, 999. If you remember previously, anytime I send one, it repeated one time and then it stopped. Now, this is interesting. Send. And you see it sent. So there's a bunch of uh, 999 one time. Let's do it again. Now it catch it. And you see, keep on sending 999 even though I push it only one time because it's broadcasting. So everybody receive it. And then they start repeating everybody receive it. So you see it for a while, it's all 999 until after a while the traffic clear looks like and then it becomes zero again. Oop, okay. So it's in quite a bit of time for a while until it's clear. So it's, oh, this time around it catch a lot. So that keep on bouncing around the same entry to each other. And that's so that's the situation. So that's essentially it caught up in the message. So doing broadcast, you can see that if you just send a signal only, it's kind of hard. You have to have somehow create a message protocol. So this one know the message for it. This one knows the message for it. So somehow you have to code the signal with it. Finally clears out now. So let's see, 256, here we go. It got caught and then it kind of clear out again, hopefully, good. So mismatch, sometimes it catch on for a long time. Then I finally zero. So I send it again. Okay, that's it.